Uh, all right, you're good to go. Yes, all right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Talk to Danielle podcast. Uh, another great episode. Today, we are going to be talking with Kristen Labbe, who uh, is a, uh, an amazing person. I just, I just enjoy talking to her. I could talk to her all day, all week. Uh, and she brings in a very important message for parents who have differently abled children and the whole approach to it and how you need to heal yourself to be able to care for your child. So I want to thank you very much, Christine, for joining in today. And uh, if if you can just let us go a little bit, just briefly share what uh, your story and uh, and what you do. Well, thank you so much for having me today. Uh, where to begin my story? Um, well, a few years ago, eight and a half years ago exactly, I had a daughter, my second daughter, and two years after her birth, she was diagnosed with atypical Rett syndrome. And the first two years, she was diagnosed with global developmental delay. So we weren't sure what was going on. And at the time, you know, as a parent, when you find out that your child is different, you do everything in your power to be able to support your child. But at the time, sometimes we don't realize how much those external pressures, how much those expectations, and how much our actual inner child wounds, you know, our feelings of worthiness, our feelings of being enough, how all of that influences how we're going to show up for our child. And in those early stages, there's no focus on that support for the parent so that the parent starts to understand what they're going through, right? What suffering is coming up, what things from the past are coming up. So I would say, if I talk about my own story, I feel like those first two years, so many feelings were coming up, but I had been so used to suppressing my feelings. I'd become an expert at it. And so I just moved into research mode, doing mode, fixing mode, right? And so, and I feel like right now the system really encourages the parents down that path of fixing. So there was a lot of research, um, a lot of exploring modalities, bringing my daughter all over the place, whether it was throughout the US or in Canada and continuously supporting her until I eventually realized, wait a minute, I need to work on myself. This isn't just about fixing her because in truth, there's, there's nothing wrong with her. She's already whole. She was whole the moment she was born. And that kind of shifted my focus a little bit and led me down this path of inner healing also led me down a new career path where now I support differently abled children and their families. And I think I'll leave it here because otherwise I could probably talk for days. <laughs> yes. And I think that's what happens when we get started on this because there is so much of you, you've touched on something very important here that I think for any parent, the minute our child is born, we just go into let's do this mode. You know, we just want our child to have the best life possible. And when you have a differently able child, that pressure is, seems to be even uh, heavier because now you're, you're worried about what people are going to think, how your child is going to be judged, how you're going to be judged. And you're getting advice from people that are not living that reality. So it's, it is overwhelming and you can get into that uh, research mode and forget to to actually enjoy your time with your child as well. So you touched on the healing part as well, where your, your past traumas kind of resurface. So what would you say, uh, would you have a pivotal moment where you said, okay, no, I, you mentioned, okay, I need to focus on my child and she's just perfect the way she is. Uh, would you, how did that work out for you? Like, how did it start to alleviate that, that heaviness in your life? I think once I started the healing process, I realized that my intentions behind my support for my daughter had to change. And I realized that authentic connection came first. So rather than looking at the shell and trying to fix the shell of the child, 
instead focusing on that authentic connection between myself and my child, truly seeing her, tapping into her essence, knowing what her gifts are, feeling what her gifts are, you know, having that ability to observe all of those beautiful things that are innate, that are already present, right? To be able to get to a space to connect authentically with your child, to get a sense of their essence, you have to do that work on yourself. You have to come to a space where you become more connected to yourself, to your inner compass, to your own truth. You begin to see yourself. You begin to see your strengths, your gifts. You start celebrating your own uniqueness. You know, those are the moments where it starts to really shift how you view your own child. And I think that was a pivotal moment for me in terms of how I was gonna support Gabby going forward because Gabby, my daughter with atypical Rett syndrome is just different. She is different. She's not moldable. It's not going to happen, right? And so why would I try and mold her into something that she isn't? That only leads her to feel like she's unworthy, feel like she's not enough, feel like she doesn't fit in right? Instead, we should be sim simply celebrating the children that we have and moving away from focusing on those limitations and instead bringing our attention more on those beautiful things that are there and using those things to empower our children, create that environment where they're intrinsically motivated, where they want to do things, explore things, but things, but it be mixed into what they're drawn to. I think so if you talk about a pivotal moment when things changed, how I was showing up for my child and the environment in which she was going to develop and thrive changed completely. And I think this is where I started seeing a completely different trajectory for all children that are differently abled. Because the way that we're doing it now, it simply isn't working, right? We're, we're diminishing their internal world to help them fit in on the external, but in truth, what's going to bring them to that joy and fulfillment, which really is our goal, right? We want our kids to be happy, right? Yeah. It's by yeah. nourishing that inner world that then creates that belief, that motivation, that de desire, you know, that understanding of what am I here to share with life, right? And mm -hmm. that leads to joy and fulfillment. Yeah. I think I love that. And I, you, you touched on it again is we focus so much on trying to get this child to fit into the norm so that everybody's comfortable, but it really should be the other way around. And it does need to change, but it's hard to get that support or to get that, um, how can I say, that reassurance that it's okay to not follow the norm and it's okay to not fit into these boxes. Uh, you did mention that you kind of changed your professional uh, path uh, with all of this. Can you uh, talk to us about your businesses? I know you have a couple of them um, and how that, that kind of opened things up for you and your family as well. Well, I love that you say, and this is an important point to mention is that families, you know, feel when they're wanting to do something different than the norm, they don't feel good about it. They're not sure, you know? And so this is where there's that confusion. And I feel that's part of what I'm trying to do for families is create that community, create that space where all like-minded parents come together to become empowered to advocate for our children, to create change. Because when we come together, we start creating a ripple effect, right? If, if we're all coming together from all over the world, we create change where we are, and then we bring more parents together, and eventually that creates greater change for families, right? So part of the work that I do is to support parents through that healing process, to help parents understand that there's a fog that's getting in the way of them truly seeing their child and empower they, empowering them to remove that fog, <clears throat> right? Through their own healing, through shifting their beliefs, through shifting their mindset, all of that self-care is included into that, moving into more self-love to then love our child unconditionally. So there's that aspect of supporting the parents, but then there's this also this piece of working with the children. So as a neuromovement practitioner, I work directly with the children 
And I find that this is a beautiful opportunity for me to show the parents what it means to mirror back to the child, what we feel emanating from that child. So I will know and feel that child's essence. I will know all kinds of things about that child without really spending much time with them, simply because I can just tap into their soul self. I just connect right away. It's like this deep connection right away. And I would say as a practitioner, working with children, authentic connection, again, is key, right? So it's not just the parents, also the practitioners, educators, therapists, anyone that is going to be in that child's life. That authentic connection is key to create that safe, safe space and that optimal environment for that child to really step into that innate potential. So I would say it's a great opportunity for me to show parents what that means. And I think for parents, when they see someone outside of their world, really see their child, it's the most amazing feeling because it's almost like, oh, she sees what I see, but that I can't accept that I see because everybody else sees something different, right? And so I think that's also part of what I'm trying to do here is help parents see the children through my work with the children. And then the third piece is working with the children, right? So working with the children to help the children see that they're magnificent and beautiful because my energy is emanating that. I'm mirroring back to them how amazing they are and it's genuine, right? That authentic connection makes it that they trust what they're feeling from me. So when they're with me, they feel like the most amazing human that exists in life. And that's, but that's exactly how I feel when I see them. I think they're absolutely beautiful and amazing and I don't see limitations. All I see is all of the beautiful parts of them, right? That's right. It's just, that's how I'm programmed. I don't see the other stuff. And I feel like when we work on ourselves and we begin to move away from seeing life from a lens of lack, from a lens of, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough this, you know, I don't have enough holidays. I don't have enough self-care. I don't have enough time for myself. When we move away from that, I don't have enough and we move more into a space of gratitude and just appreciation of all things, that trickles into how we view people, right? So instead of being in a space of judgment, we're in that space of seeing all of those beautiful qualities that are in that person. That is also associated with self-love, right? So all of it is interconnected. But so those are the three things that I'm really working on is the families, the children, and really empowering the parents to advocate because parents know deep down, they have the wisdom, they know it, they know this, they know how to show up for their kids. It's all the noise and all the wounds that fog their vision and that fog, you know, their actions and their intentions. Mm -hmm. And that's beautiful because I've seen this working with families as well, where when you have that authentic connection uh, with the child, you almost see the just the weight get lifted off off the parents' shoulders. They're just like, oh, you know, they can breathe. And imagine if you are a parent who's listening right now, uh, who does have a differently abled child, imagine people actually seeing your child for who they are because you get to see them every day. You don't have to justify, you don't have to explain yourself. You don't have to, you know, you just be with, with your child and it it just changes everything. And this is what I like. The approach that you have is when families come to you, when parents come to you, they are supported by other parents who live the same thing you do, who know your reality, because you can get advice from people who don't really understand your reality. And so it's it's foggy. It really is foggy. So you're thinking, well, that I appreciate your help, but this isn't going to apply to me. And so this is what I like about the community that you're building. I don't know if you can add a little bit more about that, where parents are helping parents, but they're all going through the same thing. Yes, actually, the community is is really wonderful in the sense that it has multiple objectives, right? A big part of it is that self-care, that self-healing. And we help parents down that path, one, by connecting with themselves through their moving body, right? So bringing in that physical self-care with the emotional self-care, 
with the soul care. So bringing all of those together. And we have to understand that for parents, sometimes it's difficult to start that conversation about their feelings. They don't want to feel. They yeah. want to avoid feeling at all costs. They want to numb themselves. I've been there, right? We want to suppress, suppress, suppress because it's so painful. So what we like to do in the community is we meet everyone where they are. You know, maybe they begin to build that self-awareness through the moving body. Maybe they begin by reflecting on some of the conversations that we have. Um, myself and another conscious parenting coach, Cindy Kaplan, are the ones who co-host this community. And so we have many conversations about the experience as parents, because we're both parents of differently abled children. And we talk about those different stages. We talk about intention. We talk about how we support our children, how we show up for them, how we heal, you know, the process of healing, how we bring that self-care into our lives. What does it mean to support our emotional well-being, right? So we talk about all that stuff, but then there's another piece that is more about educating parents. So we give them all kinds of different conversations with, you know, different authors, so interviews with authors, or we bring in professionals to talk about different ways that the parents can support their children or to simply educate the parents about what might be important in terms of nutrition or in terms of uh, cognitive and physical development, but in a way that aligns with our idea that we're building the child up from the inside. So we're really prioritizing that self-worth, but we're still looking at how can we support this child holistically, right? So it, it just, there's so much, there's so much within this community that can be helpful for, for parents. And it's, it's, um, it's self-paced. So they can decide what they want to watch, when they want to watch, you know, what is aligned, what feels right at the time. So that's kind of the idea behind the community right now. That's amazing. And it, is, it does change things when you know that you're being supported by people who understand what you're really going through. And uh, what would you say would be your first, uh, how can I say this? How, how would you be, the advice that you would give a parent who is, starting and they're saying okay this the self-care self self-love that sounds all nice and you know but I don't have the time I don't have the energy I don't have the, you know when do I have time when I'm always caring for my child if you have other children you have to to care for the other children as well so what would be your advice to say where to start like um, how would you say it's okay to take care of yourself and all of this well so it really depends on where the parent is, right? And I would say in those early stages, feeling that pain is so hard. It's really hard because it's bringing up so much at the same time. Imagine all of your wounds that you've accumulated. So I look at this as we have a backpack and it has all of our baggage, right? All our stuff from our entire lives, it's sitting in a bag and it's really heavy, right? <laughs> Imagine all that stuff coming up to the surface all at once at the same time. It's so overwhelming that for survival, we suppress. To survive, we push it down. So I would say for parents to just be patient with yourself, to love yourself, give yourself a hug, you know, cradle yourself. It's okay. It's okay to feel pain. It's okay to be you know, in a space of grieving the life you thought you would have, of grieving the child you thought you would have, right? It's okay to live those feelings, not to feel guilty about feeling those feelings because they're part of that healing process, right? To allow ourselves and to allow ourselves to sit in whatever feelings we need to sit in for as long as it takes, right? It's not linear, first of all, and there's no you know, it should take you three months to go through. No, it's, it's, it's personal. So mm -hmm. it's just important for parents to listen to themselves. And I would say, if I'm going to say one thing is not to forget your intuition. I think parents lose that sight of what their intuition is telling them from the very start. From the very start, parents say to themselves, no, there's so much more. I feel so much more for my child. There's more. I, I don't understand. This doesn't feel right when everybody's talking about limitations, when everybody's mm -hmm. talking about what they're not, 
when everybody's imposing on my child what their future is going to look like, that's not what I feel. At the day, we want parents to be empowered to trust that voice, to listen to it, to understand when that voice is coming from fear and when that voice is coming from love. Right? But that yeah. takes time. So I think, I mean, there's too many things I would recommend to a parent in the, it's, it's so personal. I would literally have to speak to that particular parent and know where they are because it's going to look different for everyone and how they're going to start the journey is going to look different for everyone. You know, I had to go through a process of transformation through the moving body to start mm -hmm. my healing process. It didn't start with a coach, right? It only began with that inner healing, that deeper emotional healing that only came after I gained more self-awareness through the moving body, becoming a, a neuro movement practitioner, right? So mm -hmm. for everyone is going to be different. That's it. And I'm, I'm so happy that you mentioned that because it's an, an important message to send out there. Not a lot of people think they think there is this magic formula, this cookie cutter uh, format that we can all follow to get to our healing. But it is individual. It is uh, like you said, it's nonlinear. So it is important to take that time, take your time. Don't compare yourself to other people because it's it's your own journey and nobody else can tell you how to live that one. So I think it's wonderful. And you did mention earlier that you, um, Gabby's your, your second daughter. For If you could share with the families that sometimes caring for a differently abled child seems like it's taking up a lot of your time. How do you find balance to be able to, to give just as much love and attention for, uh, for your other daughter? So that's a really important, it's very important that you mention this because what happens is we put so much attention on our differently abled child that oftentimes that sibling, you know, will sometimes even just kind of take a step back. And what they learn over time is that their needs are not as important or they need to kind of um, quiet down their needs because other people need more space. You know, this this actually trickles into their adulthood later on. So it's really important to pay attention to the siblings. And I don't want to overwhelm the parents by adding more on. But at the end of the day, when we begin to do that work on ourselves, we start regulating our nervous system. We start bringing ourselves back to a space of peace. We start understanding how to live in that space of just being in that neutral area where the as is is okay, we're okay with the as is, right? We're in this space of seeing life from a very different lens. When we move into that space and we start healing, automatically, we're not bringing energy on all kinds of fears, on all kinds of things that were sucking the energy out of us, right? Mm -hmm. So suddenly right. we have so much more energy. This isn't even about, you know, going to the spa or getting enough sleep. This is the stress we feel, the energy we're burning because we're emotionally unwell with everything that's occurring. When suddenly we're feeling better within ourselves, suddenly there's more patience, so much more time, so much more stillness. And suddenly you have more time with the kids. And it's not even so much about how much time we're spending with our kids. It's the quality of the time that's spent with your kids, that authentic connection. So when I talk about that authentic connection with a differently abled child, the same applies for the siblings. So when you learn how to have that authentic connection with your differently abled child, it completely changes the dynamic with your neurotypical child, completely changes everything where suddenly you see them, you value them, you hear them. And you can be in a space of peace within yourself. So they start mirroring you, right? So when you do that work on yourself, children learn from that. They observe, they feel, they mirror, they, you, you're mirroring to them what you want, you know, to see for them, right? So when you're working on yourself, it automatically has a ripple effect on your other children. So I would say, don't put so much pressure on yourself about time and, you know, doing those activities and bringing, because some parents feel like, 
well, I have to bring my children to all these sports and I need to do this and I need to do that and bring them to this right. activity and I need to make sure they're happy, enjoying, whatever. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, a child is going to be happiest when they feel, feel seen, heard, and valued, when there is unconditional love, right? That authentic connection is key. So if you can make time for anything, it's that. And that only simply requires you to simply sit with your child. You know, if it's a differently abled child that is nonverbal, just being with them. If it's the sibling, it's, it's also acknowledging that child and doing nothing, right? So when that child's simply sitting, being themselves saying, you're so wonderful, honey, you know? Mm -hmm. And then they ask you, yeah. well, why? Just because, just because you are, right? So practicing, acknowledging our kids, in simply being so they start to value who they are without feeling the need to do anything. I would say if you're going to do something with those siblings, you know, do that and practice taking care of yourself. You will have the answers. You will have more of the answers of what and how for your specific family and for your environment at home, the more you work on yourself. That's right. And that's why self-care and self-love is not selfish because you just said it, you're creating a ripple effect where you're giving your child the tools to be able to, to have coping mechanisms for later on in life. And it's just, a, it's beautiful. So it's not selfish. You do need to take care of yourself. You could say all the beautiful words to your children, but if they don't see you put them into action, those words mean nothing. So it is, uh, it's beautiful. To, to hear you say that. Thank you, Christy. I'm curious to know, and if you want to share, uh, what, are, what are you working on recently? What do you have going on with, uh, with your movement? Well, I'm actually just about to publish a children's book. It's called <laughs> Our Superpowers, and it actually talks about the siblings. It's got more of a focus on the siblings and the superpowers the siblings can develop as a result of having a differently abled brother or sister. So, and this kind of highlights the importance of all children taking the time to connect with children that are differently abled or neurodivergent because it really helps them tap into certain gifts that they didn't know they had. Because what happens is neurodivergent children develop all kinds of things that maybe we don't see, but they're developing multiple strengths and gifts that are simply different, right? So it's getting to know what those are and allowing ourselves to be open to those gifts that might even be present within ourselves. So when a neurotypical child starts connecting authentically with a neurodivergent child, there's that opportunity to start seeing things differently, to start feeling things differently, to start feeling themselves connecting to their inner compass. You know, there's a beautiful opportunity. So the book is really to educate, not only parents and educators. At the end of the book, there's an author's note with exercises that children can do with neurodivergent children. But the story itself is really focused on siblings because oftentimes I feel like there's just so much of a focus on the differently abled child and the sibling is forgotten. So that's why I wrote that yeah. book. The other thing I'm working on is a book for parents and can also be very interesting for educators and therapists. It talks about the parent's journey, the importance of the parent healing, and it's really separated into sections. So first I talk about my story a little bit. Um, the second part is really focused on the parent. And then that third part is focused on, okay, now that you've gone through one and two, now let's talk about what it really means to show up for your child. What does it mean to create that optimal environment for your child to step into their innate potential? And so that's really the, the, the juice of the book, right? <laughs> um, it's that, that third piece. And I'm excited about this one. I have no idea when it'll be published, but it's in the works. Oh, that's amazing. And I like that too, because we do all that work on ourselves and we're, you know, we're doing everything. And then it's, it's like, okay, that's nice. I'm healing. I can feel it. But now what, how do I transfer that over? So we need books like this. And I love the, uh, the, the books for the sibling as well, because parents can actually see the beauty in connecting uh, 
to, and on so many different levels. So I think that's wonderful. I'm excited. I can't wait. I can't wait to see those books come out. Now, before I, uh, I close it off, I always ask a question that all everybody that I interview, and I came from a little girl that interviewed me a few uh, about three years back. And my question is, what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> well, I could answer this in two ways, but you know, at the end of the day, I already am whole. So I don't mm -hmm. need to be anything other than what I already am. That's I think I'm going to, I'm not even going to answer it the other way, because I think this is, this is a better way to answer this question yeah. right now that we are already our innate potential. It's already within us. So we already are. I don't need to be more than what I am. It's simply a matter of being able to tap in to what's always been there. That's right. I, I like that. We are we are already who we are meant to be. I think that's wonderful. <laughs> it's, it's a great question, a great answer. Thank you. And how can people reach you or if they want to follow your work? Uh, we will add that to the comments. We're everywhere that this podcast is, uh, is streaming. Uh, if they want to get more information on your services and the community and uh, when your book comes out, where, where can they reach you? So they can visit, I have two websites. One is the evolvemovement.ca where um, they will find various practitioners. It speaks more of our holistic approach, our team, and we have their, our community. So there's also the community link to be able to join the community if parents are interested in stepping onto that journey. And we're about to launch some courses for parents so individual courses, bringing in professionals, those are separate from the community. If parents want to come in and learn more, educate themselves, heal, whatever it may be, we're going to have a large variety so they can access all of this through evolvemovement.ca. And they can also visit mychristinelabbe.com, which that website will have all of the information needed about any books being published, any speaking events. Um, any types of courses and so forth. No, oh, that's amazing. And of course, I know you're on social media as well. So you could always look yes. for Christine there. Absolutely. I forgot that so, part. The conscious no, practitioner. I mean, that's, that's right. Oh, it's kind of a given now. Yeah, everybody's on social media. Now, so you can definitely look at I want to thank you so much, Christine, for taking this time to talk to us and give us, you know, this that it's I would say even an introduction because not a lot of people are talking about this, the realities that parents face and that, you know, there is no secret formula. You, you just have to go with, um, with your flow and it's, it's that it's important to get that support when you need it, that you're not alone going through this. So I want to thank you. I always love the message that you share. And uh, for anybody who are watching, like I said, we'll, we'll, put all of Christine's coordinates on so you can always contact her. And again, I want to thank everybody. Stay safe, stay awesome, and we will see you soon.